Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. So we are looking at uh, 1D flows with heat addition which is uh, a rally flow. The previous class we looked at uh, uh, the rally line or rally curves. Mm -hmm. So in a PV diagram uh, it is a straight line uh, while in a TS diagram it has a curve and uh, uh, it is very good to know the uh, nature of this curve. So it has two branches and two critical points. So, uh, this point is where temperature is maximum and this is a point where entropy is maximum. Okay. So, this corresponds to uh, a rally curve and uh, this is for static conditions. You can also draw the corresponding stagnation conditions and at the point of maximum Uh, entropy you have maximum heat addition also uh, these are stagnation lines T0 lines T0 each is a maximum. So, the maximum an amount of heat that can be added corresponds to uh, the location of S maximum that is the entropy maximum and uh, this corresponds to Mach number equal to 1. So, all these upper branch uh, cases are of subsonic conditions by lower branch corresponds to supersonic conditions. So, when heat is getting added in a subsonic flow, uh, the velocity increases, Mach number increases, it drives it towards uh, sonic conditions. Uh, this is the subsonic branch for the stagnation conditions and supersonic branch for the uh, stagnation conditions. Uh, now, in the subsonic flow, you also have the um, maximum enthalpy point or maximum temperature point. So, uh, the temperature initially increases until T max and thereafter it decreases uh, to S max that is uh, to the um, max critical point. Uh, while in supersonic flow the temperature keeps increasing, uh, pressure keeps increasing, velocity and Mach number uh, decrease in the uh, supersonic flow. So, uh, uh, being able to draw these curves uh, effectively uh, will be a nice uh, way to look at problems in uh, rally flow and then uh, uh, also understand them uh, properly. So, now we go to uh, the equations and see how we can get uh, various quantities for a flow. So, if there is a one dimensional flow and the heat is getting added to this at a certain rate. Uh, and flow is occurring. So, it is having m 1 at this point, m 2 after a certain point. So, pressure, temperature similar. So, uh, just as we did for other flows uh, for Fano flow, we are looking at um, ratios p 2 by p 1, t 2 by t 1 and so on. Uh, in this case, uh, we directly go uh, and look at the momentum equation. It is an invisible flow. So, p 2 by, so p plus Mm, rho v square is equal to a constant. Uh, now, if you take out uh, p as common, this will be 1 plus rho by p v square, which is 1 plus uh, multiply and divide by gamma 1 plus gamma m square. So, p multiplied by 1 plus gamma m square is a constant. Uh, from this, you can easily get what is p 2 by p 1. Mm, p 2 by p 1 is 1 plus gamma m 1 square by 1 plus gamma m 2 square. Okay, so, uh, we get p 2 by p 1. Uh, now, we are looking once p 2 by p 1 is got, we can look at uh, t 2 by t 1 and for uh, t 2 by t 1, uh, we use the uh, continuity equation and equation of state uh, uh, together. 
Okay, so because uh, row one v one is equal to row two v two, and uh, we also use p is equal to row r t. Combine them together so that uh, uh, the continuity equation can be expressed in terms of pressure and uh, temperature. Rho is p by t, so p one v one by t one is equal to p two by t two, where v is the uh, velocity. Uh, so, uh, from here we can get T 2 by T 1 as P 2 by P 1, uh, P 2 by P 1 multiplied by V 2 by or divided by um, um, P 2 by P 1 multiplied by V 2 by V 1 and V 2 by V 1 is uh, V is uh, uh, Mach number multiplied by acoustic speed and acoustic speed goes as square root of T. So, we use all these here. So uh, m 2 multiplied by a 2, m 1 multiplied by a 1 and they are getting uh, t 2. Uh, so, a 2 goes as square root of t 2. So, finally, uh, t 2 by t 1 can be expressed because um, you have a square root here that will come over here. So, it is p 2 by p 1 whole square multiplied by m 2 by m 1 whole square and p 2 by p 1 we have an expression. So, we get the expression for t 2 by t 1. So, once we know both uh, p 2 by p 1 and t 2 by t 1 uh, rho 2 by rho 1 can be easily uh, got by uh, equation of state. So, you can get rho 2 by rho 1 which is 1 plus gamma m 2 uh, square by 1 plus gamma m 1 square multiplied by m 2 by m 1 whole square. Now, what about uh, uh, stagnation quantities? Uh, p 0 2 and p 0 2 by p 0 1 and t 0 2 by t 0 1 uh, that uh, you can couple it along with uh, the p 2 by p 1 we have just got and p 0 2 by p 2 by uh, p 0 1 by p 1. Okay. So, this is what uh, we will we need to get. So, this you will get p 0 2 by p 0 1 multiplied by. So, this is 1 plus gamma minus 1 m 2 square, this is 1 plus gamma minus 1 m 1 square and that should be multiplied by p 2 by p 1. So, if you multiply this, multi this will gives p 1 by p 2, multiply this by p 2 by p 1 and you will get p 0 2 by p 0 1. So, uh, that is how we get. So, uh, couple both of them together and p 0 2 by p 0 1 can be uh, got here. Uh, next we look at t 0 2 by t 0 1 it is the same principle. Now, uh, you have uh, t 0 2 by t 2 divided by t 0 1 by t 1. Uh, this is uh, t 0 2 by t 0 1 multiplied by t 1 by t 2. If you multiply t 0 2 by t 0 1 multiplied by t 1 by t 2 and uh, if you multiply this by t 2 by t 1 you get t 0 2 by uh, t 0 1 uh, same principle as what was done for p 0 2 by p 0 1. So, uh, and t 0 2 uh, t 0 by t is known 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m square. So, uh, we can now write um, the expression for uh, t 0 2 by uh, t 0 1. So, uh, using these uh, set of equations uh, we get p 2 by p 1 t 2 by t 1 uh, root 2 by rho 1 and p 0 2 by p 0 1 t 0 2 by t 0 1. So, uh, but the main principle here when we look at uh, uh, Rayleigh flows is um, and that the heat added Q is C p multiplied by T 0 2 minus T 0 1. Okay. So, uh, it is C p T 0 2 minus T 0 1 is equal to Q. So, when we solve some problems this uh, connection will become um, uh, clear, uh, but uh, now if you look at these equations it must be clear that, that suppose all the initial values are given you know m 1 p 1 t 1 and you know the amount of heat added q. Uh, then t 0 2 can be found out um, then 
T02 by T01 can be evaluated. M1 is known, so we need to find the M2, but we get a um, uh, equation which is not easily uh, solvable, is analytically difficult to uh, solve this, solve this in uh, directly. So, uh, the way ahead is uh, similar to what was done in Fano flows, you look for a uh, reference condition and uh, for a uh, Rayleigh flow, there exists such a reference condition uh, in the uh, maximum entropy point S max, which corresponds to Mach number equal to 1. So, uh, for Rayleigh flow, it is possible uh, to take the reference as the condition where the flow goes to sonic, okay, sonic values. But what uh, we should really uh, underline, very uh, much underline is uh, that the sonic values that is referred to in uh, Rayleigh flow is fundamentally different from adiabatic uh, sonic conditions. So, this uh, what uh, was earlier referred to, if you had taken uh, T 0 by T star uh, for uh, an isentropic flow or an adiabatic flow, they would uh, remain the constant because flow is adiabatic, there is no heat being added. But, um, if you look at the Rayleigh flow, uh, this T star is not a constant, it keeps varying, it is different at different conditions. So, um, it is uh, different uh, from the adiabatic case, but what you should understand here is that for a given Rayleigh curve uh, or for a given Rayleigh flow, uh, which implies that G is a constant, which is true, it is a 1 D flow, steady 1 D flow, the mass flux will be constant and P plus rho V square equal to constant. Uh, so, these are the two conditions which goes in evaluating this um, uh, uh, Rayleigh curve. So, uh, for, uh, for a given uh, Rayleigh curve, this point is a unique point. So, that should be understood. So, if a uh, flow process in a duct falls in a Rayleigh curve, then it will have a unique uh, uh, star point or a sonic point. So, um, how do we evaluate it? Take the Rayleigh flow equations that you already have uh, found out, which is P by uh, P 2 by P 1, T 2 by T 1, uh, rho 2 by rho 1. And in that, uh, you substitute uh, P 2 is equal to P T 2 equal to T and P 1 equal to P star and uh, T 1 equal to T star. Then we get P by P star and M, e M 1 equal to 1. So, you get 1 plus gamma by 1 plus gamma M square similarly T by T star similarly rho by rho star. So, if you want to express P 2 by P 1, uh, this can be represented as P 2 by P star divided by P 1 by P star, where the P star is the same for uh, a Rayleigh curve. Similarly, T 2 by T 1 is T 2 by T star divided by T 1 by T star. So, uh, once uh, this T star, uh, this uh, evaluation is done, uh, then we can represent any um, ratios in terms of uh, the sonic conditions. And uh, the advantage here again we are able to uh, we plot uh, all these values um, uh, in terms of tables or they are available through uh, calculators. So, that is the ease of using these uh, reference condition. So, if uh, so always uh, the flow drives uh, the thing towards uh, in rally flow it flies uh, drives it towards a sonic condition. So, always heat addition achieves uh, sonic conditions. Okay, so, how do we go about uh, uh, solving this uh, problem? Suppose, we know uh, the conditions, uh, initial conditions uh, pressure P 1, T 1 and M 1 are known. Uh, then uh, and uh, heat added is known, Q is known. So, uh, uh, the basic equation is Q is C P T 0 2 minus T 0 1. Uh, then, uh, uh, if we know the pressure, temperature 
and uh, Mach number we can find the uh, stagnation properties T0 using the uh, uh, expression T0 by T1 or P0 by P1 similarly you can find stagnation conditions at uh, initial so P01 and T01 can be found then T02 um, can be found uh, by using this particular equation uh, relating heat added to the uh, change in total enthalpy then uh, T02 by T01 can be expressed and this can be is equal to T02 by T0 star by T01 by T0 star and once we are able to find T02 by T0 star we can use uh, tables or calculators to find uh, value of M2. So, once M2 is known all other quantities can be uh, determined. So, that is how uh, the algorithm or the um, recipe to solve these problems. Uh, now, uh, we go to the uh, discussions where we look at uh, the, this is a 1D flow uh, similar to Fano flow in Fano flow we looked at if the inlet flow is uh, supersonic um, uh, then uh, is there uh, a possibility that shocks can occur in the context of uh, Fano flow. Similarly, we look at the point whether uh, shocks can occur in a rally flow and uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, analysis is also very similar shock equations are rho 1 v 1 is equal to rho 2 v 2 and um, p 1 plus rho 1 v 1 square equal to p 2 plus rho 2 v 2 square and uh, so this is g and this is a constant this is true for Rayleigh flow also and um, of course h naught is constant for a shock so um, that is h plus v square by 2 is a constant but can this be located on a Rayleigh curve yes it is also the first two uh, it satisfies the first two equations which are the ones with dry which um, actually plot the Rayleigh curve so it will um, satisfy the rally curve. Uh, now, what uh, one has to do if you have to look at locating a shock on a rally curve is to look at uh, uh, not just the static conditions, but also the stagnation curves. Uh, here you can see the stagnation curves there is a um, lower branch and an upper branch. Uh, the scale makes it look almost similar, but they are uh, slightly apart. and uh, uh, what we look at is draw a constant h curve because that is what satisfies uh, a shock constant h. So, one constant h curve is drawn it cuts the lower and upper branches at particular points on the stagnation lines. So, they have the same stagnation temperatures uh, stagnation enthalpy and look at the corresponding points on the Rayleigh curve. So, they will correspond to the uh, shock points on a uh, rally curve. So, this is point uh, before the shock that is 1 and this is point after the shock. So, if you correspond to this one this is point 2 and this is point 3. Okay. Uh, so, uh, that is the point. So, uh, you can locate a shock in a rally curve. This also uh, brings about an interesting point in Fano curve uh, we have seen that in case uh, a shock appeared in a uh, Fano curve then it had an effect on the maximum um, length of the duct that can be had for achieving sonic conditions and uh, that was uh, uh, achieved. So, there in the rally curve uh, what you were uh, in the Fano curve uh, the appearance of a shock actually increased the maximum length. Uh, so, if you uh, sort of uh, look at that and remember it. So, it will be okay, that is wrong. So, T s for a Fano is like this and if a shock appears then the maximum length 
it, it included a supersonic length and a subsonic length and uh, that was total length could be higher. But what about in the case of a rally curve, will it change the maximum heat that can be added which corresponds to this particular point. So, if you take any point uh, from a uh, supersonic solution say point 1 and this corresponds to point 4 and um, uh, this is the maximum heat that can be added. Uh, if a shock appears anywhere in between, okay, will it change uh, the maximum heat that can be added uh, and uh, that undergoes no change because a shock does not affect the enthalpy. So, enthalpy is constant across a shock. So, you take at any location, uh, it just changes the flow from supersonic condition to subsonic. So, it uh, moves like this. So, it goes up and goes over like that, but it does not change the um, total heat that is getting added. So, uh, now if you look at uh, uh, the uh, uh, point that if you consider both a Fano curve and a Rayleigh curve. A uh, Fano curve also has uh, shocks associated with it and Rayleigh curve also has a shock associated with it. Uh, is there any uh, uh, correlation between these two? Is there any connection? If you look at uh, Fano curve, what it considers is rho 1 v 1, rho 2 v 2 and adiabatic flow h 1 plus v 1 square by 2 is equal to h 2 plus v 2 square by 2. This is Fano while uh, uh, Raleigh considers uh, rho 1 v 1 equal to rho 2 v 2 and uh, p 1 plus rho 1 v 1 square equal to p 2 plus rho 2 v 2 square. Now, if you take them together uh, both satisfy rho 1 v 1 is equal to rho 2 v 2 and also um, it satisfies uh, enthalpy remaining total enthalpy remaining constant and uh, momentum also remaining uh, constant uh, uh, p 1 plus rho 1 v 1 square is equal to p 2 plus rho 2 v 2 square. So, if you take all of them together it satisfies all the conditions of the shock. So, an intersection of a Fano curve with a Rayleigh curve is uh, nothing but uh, the uh, shock. So, you can locate a shock at intersections of uh, Fano curve and the Rayleigh curve and uh, uh, the for a Fano curve the stagnation uh, uh, temperature remains a constant. So, the stagnation temperature uh, reference for both the Fano and the shock are the same uh, while in the Rayleigh it actually cuts across the two uh, branches. So, uh, if you consider Fano curve, Rayleigh curve and the shock uh, all of them can appear as intersections of each other. Okay. So, uh, now we come to uh, another important point which is uh, uh, that uh, there is there. Uh, so, there is a location of maximum um, uh, temperature or maximum uh, heat added which is maximum heat added can be uh, located along the stagnation curves. So, it will correspond to this particular uh, point of maximum entropy, okay, it corresponds to that. So, we are considering, so let us take a subsonic flow, in the subsonic flow that is the point here uh, 2 0 that is the stagnation point and heat is being added. So, as heat gets added, uh, it is driven towards sonic conditions and if it gets it continues to be added and reaches the maximum heat uh, addition point which is uh, T naught maximum then uh, you cannot add any more heat beyond this point. So, that uh, uh, is known as thermal choking. So, we have discussed mass flow rate choking in the context of variable area ducts and friction choking which relates to the length of the pipe. Uh, that in frictional uh, flows or Fano flows. Now, we come to uh, in the case of thermal uh, or rally flows, 
you have uh, thermal choking where uh, flow achieves uh, Mach number 1 uh, due to heat being added and uh, that is the maximum amount of heat that can be added. Suppose you want to add more in the case of a subsonic flow then uh, exactly similar to what happens in a fan of flow condition you can have two uh, cases one is that if you want uh, the flow to remain on the same rally curve then the point 2 should be shifted to some other location to double prime uh, where uh, now there is uh, scope available for adding more heat but this implies greater pressures so more pumping and so on. Uh, the other uh, solution that can occur is uh, simply the um, flow just shifts to another rally line uh, where uh, g is smaller g decreases that means mass flow decreases so this is a 2 prime here where mass flow rate has decreased but now it can allow a uh, larger uh, um, heat to be added. So, basically when choking happens if you try to change anything at the choking point it always affects the upstream. Now, what happens if uh, it uh, happens in a uh, supersonic case uh, then uh, in the supersonic case can a shock change the uh, location of uh, the maximum heat transfer. Uh, it cannot change because uh, shock is um, uh, a constant uh, total enthalpy process or constant stagnation enthalpy process. So, uh, that uh, would not change the location of a shock would not change the maximum heat being added it still has to uh, change upstream conditions in order to uh, change the total amount of heat that is being added. But the appearance of a shock allows upstream uh, propagation of information. So, that can change things. So, uh, once a subsonic flow appears uh, uh, then it can change uh, things regarding uh, pressures and how they are felt upstream. Okay. So, that can happen. And, uh, so, now uh, again we can look at influence coefficients uh, here the driver is change in uh, stagnation temperature d t naught which is related to uh, function of the amount of heat added. Okay. So, d t naught by t naught is the driver here based on this we can look at what happens to uh, d m by m d p by p d rho by rho and the procedure for getting these influence coefficients is the same. Uh, you write down all the equations uh, corresponding to uh, the conservation of equations as well as uh, the, uh, the ideal gas law P is equal to rho R T. Uh, what is Mach number? Mach number is B multiplied by A and so on and then uh, club all of them together take them simultaneously in a matrix form and from there you can express um, every other function in the with respect to only d to t naught by t naught as the uh, driving uh, potential or driver. So, if you look at that then how do these properties change we have uh, already gone through them uh, if uh, heat is getting added in a subsonic flow. Uh, Mach number increases in a supersonic flow Mach number decreases. Uh, pressure uh, decreases uh, in a, a subsonic flow uh, temperature will increase as long as Mach number is uh, less than uh, 1 by square root of gamma. So, it is less than 1 by square root of gamma, but then after uh, 1 by square root of gamma uh, for Mach numbers greater than 1 by square root of gamma. Uh, temperature will decrease, but in the case of a um, supersonic flow uh, the temperature will always increase. So, it will uh, continuously increase um, pressures will increase uh, and the velocity uh, decreases in a supersonic flow, but increases in a uh, subsonic flow. So, and always uh, entropy increases in this when we consider heat addition. 
and nothing stops us from removing heat. Uh, if you remove heat, then all the processes get uh, reversed. So, with that we come to an end of uh, the discussions on Rayleigh flow. Uh, so, uh, we will do a couple of uh, numericals in order to get uh, really clear understanding of them and apply these principles and uh, that with that we come towards the end of discussions of one dimensional uh, flows. So, next class we will look at a couple of numericals.